So in this video, this is going to be video one of section 4-3, covering probability of complements. In the second video, we're, we'll be talking about conditional probabilities. So recall that in prior videos, we saw the probability of complement formula, formulas. It's one formula, but there were multiple ways to write it. So here's one way. Another way we could have written this is the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement of A, right? So in this section in particular, we're going to be talking about the probability of at least one. So before we get started, we have to understand um, two things. Uh, we need to understand what at least one means. And the second thing we need to understand is <clears throat> that we can restate at least one um, or what what at least the complement of at least one is. So let's start with at least one and explain what that means. So at least one means one or more. A common misconception or mistake a lot of students make is they think or they uh, incorrectly interpret or view at least one as less than. So at least is not the same as less than. So let me go ahead and write this in, write, write this down so you guys can see it. At least is not, so is not the same as less than. So that is very important. Uh, because I, I see this a lot. I see a lot of students make the mistake that of equating at least with less than. So they are not the same thing. So let me explain why. So at least one. So let's say in there and see our example here. Let's say uh, Derek's mom told him he had to eat at least one piece of broccoli before he could leave the dinner table. So what does that mean? So what? How many broccolis can Derek eat? And his mom would be happy. So what if he, is, he ate one broccoli? What if he ate two broccoli? I mean, when, when would, what if he eaten no broccoli? So when would his mom be satisfied? So if he, does, if, he, if he doesn't eat a broccoli, right, like no broccolis, then his mom would not be satisfied. But if he eats one broccoli, she'd be satisfied. So anything above one, she would be satisfied, right? So at least one means one or more. Okay. Um, so let's make sure we have that down. And now <clears throat> let's take a look at the complement of at least one. So the complement of at least one is everything that is not in, um, a, that is not a part of at least one. So the complement of at least one is none. Now let's see why that makes sense. So we know that at least one broccoli means one or two or three or four or five or six or above. So what is not in at least one? So what's not in at least one is zero, which means uh, at least one occurrence is, uh, the complement of at least one is none. Uh, another thing that we want to uh, be sure to understand is, um, <clears throat> A lot of times it's easier to restate none in terms of all or to think of none in terms of all. Now, what do I mean when I say that? So none girls, what does that mean? Like if you have none are girls, like if you're looking at the number of birth, uh, which are girls, what does it mean to say none are girls? Well, that can be restated as all are boys. So that's what I mean by restating none in terms of all. You can always do that by the following. So none of, none, let's just call it blank is the same. So it is the, none blank is the same as all <clears throat> opposite of blank. So in this case, none girls uh, is the same as all opposite of girls, which means all are boys, right? So we always have that right there. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some questions here. So uh, this is a, a, number one is a like a basic problem. 
here, like a level one problem. So we have a survey was conducted to determine the number of vehicles owned per household in a certain country, certain city. The results of a random sample of 85 households are listed below, or to the side rather. Find the probability of randomly selecting a household with at least one vehicle. So uh, we are trying to figure out the probability that um, there is at least <clears throat> one vehicle. So when you're given a table like this, you can do it directly. Uh, what do I mean by that? You can look at you can look at what at least one means and uh, figure out um, the probability, right? So so in this case, you're given the data. So we, we're looking at um, we're randomly selecting a household, one household. Uh, how many different ways can we get a household that has at least one uh, vehicle? So what does at least one mean? At least one means one or more, right? So one or more vehicles. And the the different the number of ways we can select <clears throat> um, one or more is that many people, right? So there's 20 who has one vehicle, 31 who has two vehicles, 15 and, and five, three, two, so on with those characteristics. So these are all at least one, right? At least one means one or more. Uh, vehicles in this case so we can add up all these and that's what that's the that would be our numerator it is the number of ways that we can select uh, somebody with at least one vehicle so let's go ahead and add that up so that's going to be 76 76 over 85 total um, people in our in the sample right so 85 total people all right, and we can change this into a, a decimal if we'd like. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. 76 divided by 85. And let's say we round to four decimal places. So this would be approximately 0.8941. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I could have done the following. Uh, what I could have done is I could have done um, the at least one. I could have done like. Uh, one minus the probability is zero, right? If if I wanted to use the complement, so the the complement of at least one, let's call it at least one event A. This would be the probability of zero would be like a complement, right? So let's just see if I do that, see what happens. So it'd be one minus so p um, probability is zero. Well, there's nine different ways we can select a household of zero out of 85 total households. So I'm going to punch this into the calculator to see if I get that answer. Okay, so we're going to go 1 minus uh, parentheses 9 divided by 85 and then close parentheses. So sure enough, I get the same exact answer. So now why did I show you guys this? Uh, because in this section where you don't have this table of um, you know, of a frequency, the frequency table, or, or something like this, you're going to have to use uh, to figure out the probability of at least one. You have to do what I did here. So I, I was only able to do this directly I, in here using that uh, because uh, I was given this. But a lot of problems on in this ch chapter in this section, you're going to have to use um, the complementary formula. All right, so before we look at those kind of problems, let's let's kind of just familiarize ourselves with um, uh, rewording complements of, of an event A. So for example, in this first example, uh, students take a math exam, let A be the following event. So A is at least one student gets an A. So what is the complement of that? So we, we had mentioned that at least one, the complement of at least one is none. Right, at least one is none. That's the complement. So here, the complement would be none uh, or no students none get an A. Or uh, we can restate it as the in terms of all. Right, this is the same as all get a non A. Again, that probably doesn't make sense, but a non-A is essentially, um, you know, a B, C, D, or an F, right? 
Uh, let's look at number two or example two. So a couple plants who have seven children. Event A is at least one is a boy. So we know that at least the complement of at least is none. So none are boys. But now what does that mean to for none to be boys? None of the seven to be boys. So that is the same as all are girls. Again, the reason why we're doing this is because when we work out the problems, the main problems that we're going to see later in a bit, uh, it is easier to interpret none as in terms of all. So whenever you want to interpret none of something, whatever that something is, it's called a blank. None blank are, means the interpretation would be all are non-blanks. And again, non-boys in this case are girls, right? All are girls. So similarly over here, none get an A, all get a non-A. Non-A in th this context means B, C, D, or an F, right? All right, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the kind of problems you're going to be seeing in this section. So if a couple plans to have six children, what is the probability that there will be at least one girl? Assume boys and girls are equally likely. Is the probability high enough for the couple to be very confident that they will get at least one girl and six children? Okay, so we are trying to figure out the probability that we have, uh, or the couple has at least one girl out of six kids. And I had mentioned that it's easier to figure, uh, it's easier to figure this out using the complementary formula. The complementary formula says that the probability of A, whatever A is, it's just an event, is equal to one minus the probability of A complement. So in this case, A is, the, the event A is at least one girl. And we mentioned that the complement, right, the complement of at least one is none. So that's a one minus the probability of none girls or no girls, right? But what, is, uh, what does none girls mean? None girls means all boys, right? So none girl means all boys. Uh, now, what is all boys? How can we get all boys? Well, that's if we get the first one is a boy, right? The first child is a boy, and then the second child is a boy, and then the third child is a boy, <clears throat> and then the fourth child is a boy. And I'm running out of room, so I'm just going to put dot, 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 and then the last child is a boy. And let's see, there are six children, right? So now, if you look at this, you uh, would recognize that this is um, multiple trials because we're having six children, uh, and it, it's an and probability, so we are going to use the multiplication rule, which means this is equal to the probability of a boy times a boy, the probability of a boy times the probability of a boy times the probability of a boy, times of a boy uh, six times, right? <clears throat> So what is the probability of having a boy? Well, it says girls and boys are births are equally likely, so that's going to be 0 0.5, which is 50%, right? That's going to be 0 0.5 times 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, times 0 .5 times 0 .5, um, and then one more time, times 0 0.5, which is equal to 1 minus 0.5 raised to the 6th power. So I'm going to erase this just because I, I need this space right here to write down the answer. So let's go ahead and put it into the calculator. So we have 1 minus 0.5 raised to the 6th power. And we get uh, that probability. So here, I'm, it doesn't say to round off. I could, if the instruction says round off to four decimal places, I'd round off to uh, this digit, right? This becomes a 4. Um, here, because it terminates, I'm just going to write down the exact answer. Again, follow on the homework, follow the round off instructions. So sometimes it's going to say three decimal places, sometimes it's going to say four decimal places, right? All right, and now let's let's stop for a moment and ask yourself, does it make sense? Well, let's see. Let's see. So the probability of um, having at least one girl 
when you have six children, you should have a good chance of having at least one girl, right? So if somebody just, uh, you know, if you ask somebody, hey, if the couple has six children, what's the chances or the probability that they have at least one of them is a girl? It'd be a good chance. And that this answer makes sense because this, this answer is very close to one. One means, a probability of one means for certain, uh, this answer, which is very close to one, this value, which is very close to one, indicates that it's very likely that they're going to, that this event is going to occur. All right, so um, to answer this question, is the probability high enough for the couple to be very confident that there will be at least one girl? And the answer is yes. Okay, number four. So number four, we have <clears throat> the following. It says, if you make a random guess, if you make random guesses on 10 multiple choice test questions, each with five possible answers. So we have 10 questions. Each have five possible answers. For example, uh, the choices are A, B, C, D, and E. What is the probability of getting at least one correct? So we're looking at the probability that at least one is correct. So at least one of the 10 are correct. And we know that we need to solve this indirectly because at least one probability is a little bit tough for now, without the, the mathematical tools to figure this out, it's a little bit tough to figure out. So that's going to be, um, and we're going to, and we're going to figure it out indirectly using the complementary formula, right? So the complement of at least one is none. So this is the probability that none are correct. But what does none correct mean? What does being none? What does none of the ten? Uh, correct mean it means that all are incorrect and now how can I get all are incorrect that is if the first one is incorrect and then the second one is incorrect and then the third and then the fourth and then all the way to the tenth one is incorrect right so there's ten of them and now we know we recognize now we got to recognize that the this is the multiplication rule, right? Correct and then correct and then correct. I'm sorry, incorrect and then incorrect and then incorrect and then the tenth one is incorrect. This is multiple trials, so this is a multiplication rule. Uh, so what is the probability? So we know we're going to find the probability of incorrect and then multiply uh, by the probability of incorrect and then again and again, ten times, right? So we know we're going to get one minus um, something to the tenth power because there's going to be ten of them, right? So what's the probability of an answer being incorrect? Well, let's see. Uh, there's five possible choices. We know that in a multiple choice question, one of them is correct and then four of them are incorrect. So how many different ways can we select an incorrect answer? Well, there's four different ways we can select an incorrect answer out of five possible choices. So this is a, the probability of getting an incorrect answer. Okay, and now even before we get uh, the answer, we let's think about this like using common sense and reasoning this out like would a probability be a, a high probability close to one or is it going to be a low probability close to zero or is it going to be like a 50 50 chance well, let's think about this we're making guesses on a uh, on 10 multiple choice questions and uh, we're asking ourselves what's the probability of just getting at least one like one or more correct so it may be we have a good chance right so we have a good chance, but it's not super good because it's a it's five choices. So we, it's not super good. If it was like uh, just a true or false question, then it we'd have a, a a very high chance. But because this is just is five choice for each question, it's not going to be as good. So it it probably won't be in like the ninety percent. But um, I I would say it's maybe more than than fifty percent. So let's go ahead and calculate it to see what we get. So I'm just going to punch it in. So we're going to go 1 minus parentheses 4 over. So that was 4 divided by 5, close parentheses. And we're going to raise that to the 10th power. Uh, so it's pretty good, right? Not quite 90%, but it's pretty good. So uh, we get that the probability would be 0 0.8926. Again, I'm rounding to four decimal places, but on your homework, uh, please follow the round off instruction. Okay, so that concludes the first video. In the next video, we're going to be talking about conditional probability.